Hey, welcome back, military journeymen. If you're new to this channel, my name is Julian Miata, and my goal is to help you along your military journey by giving you the best military tips and money saving hacks. So, subscribe so you can keep up to date. Now, I just wanted to make a quick announcement and say thank you so much, you guys, for, you know, we reached over 100,000 views total. Uh, video views. Uh, we're coming up on 2,000 subscribers, and um, I'm I'm really honored. I'm really honored that you guys uh, have uh, been liking this content that we've we've grown in, in such a short period of time um, since I've started remaking videos. And I'm I'm glad to see so many of you guys out in the fleet. When I was around Petaluma, California, and even here in uh, uh, Virginia and the DC Maryland area I see you guys around and you guys are like oh you you know you I, I was watching you before I got into the Coast Guard and you've helped me out so much so I wanted to thank you guys so much and uh, I wanted to make a special announcement for this video is that the Coast Guard boot camp survival guide is finally out uh, you can get it in ebook uh, physical format and audiobook um, I'm really really proud of this um, it's been a, a long project uh, I put a lot of a lot of time and a lot of work uh, and I had to get you know up, it approved through the Coast Guard being active duty it's like you you want to be careful of, of what you're putting out there so I wanted to make sure that it was squared away we go over a lot of information such as like nautical terminology Coast Guard history uh, the m16 piece nomenclature the different types of articles and codes that you have to know so not just the stuff that you need to know in your helmsman guys the helmsman is just the tip of the iceberg and this the survival guide you can look at the table of contents I'll include Include it uh, in this video, and um, you can also pre-order. You can also order the book. I'm sorry, in the description box, I'll post a link where you can get that book. Uh, $7.99. It's 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 really. Uh, I wanted to price it at the most competitive. Uh, price right now uh, with the other guides that are out there and uh, I've just put a lot of time and energy into this guys I uh, I hope that it shows through the quality of my videos that uh, the quality is in the uh, in the content of that book as well and and I and I did put a bit, good amount of time into the other you know the the cover art and all that stuff but um, with that being said I uh, hope you enjoy this video. Uh, it's a, uh, a Coast Guard, what it takes to survive Coast Guard boot camp, a reaction uh, from Business Insider. Uh, the quality of Business Insider is really good. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this. So let's just jump right into this. That, that's how bad you got in the You got to be that bad. Your veins are popping out of your neck. This is Don't Coast stop. Guard Boot Camp. Before they get to serve in the United States Coast Guard, all recruits have to graduate from the Coast Guard's eight week basic training program. It's not easy, there's a reason. The program is designed the way it is. We have people from all walks of life that come here. It is a small portion of the youth of this nation that are at least attempting to raise their hand and do something. Right, so you see, you see the guy, uh, the guy, how he raises his hand. He, uh, he puts his, his elbow or his bicep all the way to his ear. Um, and that's that's the proper format that you want to when you when you have a question it's bicep to the bicep to the ear and um, and she's given she's given him a mean look something bigger than themselves basic training happens here at United States Coast Guard Training Center Cape May located at the southernmost point of New Jersey before they get to Cape May, all incoming recruits report to the USO, the USO. Lounge at the Philadelphia Airport. It's where they spend their final moments before beginning their journeys as Coast Guardsmen. Why am I doing this? I don't know, it sounded like a good opportunity. My grandfather was in the Coast Guard. My mom's whole side of the family was in the Navy, but I didn't really feel like the Navy was my calling, and the Coast Guard felt right. I don't have a ton of money, man. I don't come from money, so I didn't really, uh, couldn't really afford school. So this kind of seemed like my only option to do this without uh, accruing a, so, a large amount a of debt. Guy. So I'm most nervous about, um, honestly, just the yelling. Something you just don't get used to as a day-to-day -day life as a civilian. So. 
this is the last non-stressful meeting you're gonna have for the next several weeks. It's a learning experience. Their it's teaching be methods are just a tad when different I, uh, than when what I you're used to. When I'm They're gonna walk into a world 70, that's very different. 80. It's going to I'll be very be helping intense. You, helping so the new when guys they go out in. into the fleet, stations and cutters, that they're ready Except to help be doing and ready video. to perform. The incoming recruits enjoy what little downtime they have left. Get out of the hallway, let's go! Why they line up and head to the bus that will drive them to Cape May. The Coast Guard, tough eight weeks ahead of you. What's the motto of the Coast Guard? Always ready. I can't hear you! Semper Paratus! All right. The motto of the Coast Guard is Semper Paratus. It means Semper always ready. These new recruits have about two hours to get ready for what happens the second their bus ride is over. That's how you want to, except you don't want to bump your head like that. Obviously there's a shock and awe factor to it, kind of everything goes haywire for a little bit. While we do need to instill that little bit of fear and sense of urgency in them that evening, your shortage. Yes, sir. the main goal is it's get aye, them in the building not, and sir. get them processed and get the paperwork where it needs to go and get them in the rack. Do it now, aye aye. aye, aye sir. The first incarnation of the Coast Guard was born in 1790. Secretary of the Treasury Alexander it's Hamilton Coast Guard. lobbied Congress to construct a fleet Father of ten of large ships or cutters. So all this information in here is stuff that you need to know US ports. Uh, when you're trying to advance in, in the Coast Guard, and you also US need to know it in the Cutter Service merged with the U.S. Life Saving Service. To you need to know like the dates, know today as the United the days, States Coast Guard. What the event was since then. The Coast Guard so has it's, been in, it's in the guide, in the, the survival United guide, States military every conflict. single date for all the required knowledge Today, that you need to know for the, the history. The Coast Guard has more than 40,000 so men and women on active duty, and over 30,000 more so serving 65 in the reserve the and auxiliary summer. capacities. And it all begins here. On a cold week in November, we spent right, so you four can actually days raise training flag during boot camp. That's called, to um, different companies that's called colors. That's a volunteer cities. position. Um, and uh, I was actually on colors. I um, I did it, and I did it when I got to my first unit at the small boat station. So um, it's a it's a volunteer opportunity, and I go over all the volunteer opportunities that you can do in boot camp in in the uh, in the guide as well. Stages of the eight week boot camp. Boot camp itself, it, it, it is whatever you make it. You do what you're told, yes sir, no sir, aye aye sir, and it's as simple as that. First, the new recruits are issued uniforms. First week is, is usually yeah, is pretty chill. Come on this way. And after a medical exam and standard vaccinations, exams, the male recruits get a free get haircut. Two free haircuts. Then, it's time for the initial physical fitness assessment, where the recruits have to do as many push-ups and sit-ups as they can in one minute. Finally, there's a one and a half. So they're running run. inside because it's probably Mail wet recruit. or uh, snowy or something. Something's maybe wrong with the track, but usually, um, for the most part, you're running outside. You're not running inside. Recruits have 14 minutes to finish the run. Female recruits have 17 minutes. Not every recruit passes on their first try, but they do get another chance. Now, you do get another chance. Um, you, you take your, your PT test in week four, and um, if you, you know, lots of people actually get sent back because they are not able to just meet the minimum standard. So, guys, don't go to boot camp um, not ready. You know, uh, if, if you need to increase your run time or if you need to increase your push-ups do that before you get there uh, you don't you don't want to get there and then uh, have that pressure of not doing well because when you're there you're gonna get tired you're gonna be you're gonna be hungry your muscles are gonna be sore and it's gonna be it's gonna be harder some some people do find it easier because they get a little bit more adrenaline but um, you, you, you don't want to take the risk while you're there you have five minutes to finish this test. Most of you should finish in less than three minutes. All Coast Guard recruits have to pass a three-part swimming test. Go ahead, step the edge. First, jumping into the pool from a six-foot platform. Step off. 
Then, a 100 meter swim. And last, they have to tread water for five minutes. I like the pool session. Coast Guard recruits don't have to be expert swimmers. Remedial swimmers are allowed to wear flotation devices. So they actually have uh, remedial swim, which apparently from, from what everybody that I've heard is actually really relaxing and nice uh, compared to uh, getting woken up. You, you do have to wake up an hour early. You have to wake up at 0430. Um, everybody else wakes up, at, I believe it's 0530. But uh, you wake up an hour early and you go to the pool and they teach you how to swim. So you get to wake up at your, you know, your own pace. You just have to be at the pool at a certain time. So you miss like the, the, the morning workouts, you miss the ringing of the alarm bell. Um, so I, I've heard people actually enjoy remedial swim, even though you lose an hour, um, you know, it, it's, it's a lot more relaxing. After all of this physical exertion, the recruits have undoubtedly worked up an appetite, which means it's time for lunch. Or as it's chow. known at Cape May, chow. But chow isn't a time for relaxation or chatting with your fellow recruits. PB and J's. What is it? In fact, it's the complete opposite. I Let's go. Move your feet. How about you move a little faster, man? No, no. Get out. That's not where you sit. That's not stressful. where you sit. You have someone right there telling you where to go. That's the worst it part. Be one of the most I, I, I did that one time where I sat down at the wrong table and um, I was there. I was there probably for the whole lunch or for the yeah for the whole meal. And uh, I don't know how I got out of there, but I didn't get in trouble. I sat down at the wrong table. I think I just got up and then I moved over to my correct table because I was like, I sat down. I was like, these, this isn't my company. And I was just like, oh no. I think I just got up real quick and then I moved to the right table and nobody saw me. So, but that is stressful. Relaxing times they have, you would think, uh, but that is when all eyes are on them. You're not special and you didn't shave last night like we told you. A razor never touched your face. As soon as you get back from medical, I am taking you in there and ensuring so you that you probably did shave. shave but you probably think that you get a little break from the company probably commanders. Probably not, like within the last five minutes. But when you go to your seats, the uh, company commanders are staring you down and they're asking you questions. Tell me about a class Bravo fire. Who was Alex Haley? Tell me about all Commodore All these questions Bertha. are in the guide, by Before the way. they can eat, all the answers are to randomly these. stopped by company commanders and tested on required Coast Guard knowledge. Go away, Davis. Recruits who answer correctly are allowed to pass and eat their meals. Carry on. Tell me about that. So this is why it's so important to know your acquired knowledge, guys. It's not on the deck. Start writing. Because if you know your knowledge, Start they're not going to. Start writing. Start writing. You're not going to get Start in trouble. Like Those these who guys. fail to answer correctly are ordered to document their mistakes. Be loud. Their performance be fast. Track, be knowledgeable. Collected and reviewed Rule every three. day by their company commanders. It just goes to show you that there is no downtime in basic training. It's a sense of urgency in everything we do. Sign the company out of the gallery. And it really all at the end of the day is there to assist the recruits and keep them sharp. Carry on. If anybody was wondering what the stripes on their on their left arms are, the lower part, uh, those are service stripes. So every time uh, you reach four years of service, you get to add another stripe. And the difference between the red and the gold is gold stripes are chief and red is um, not a chief. Ah! You don't respond to carry on! I forgot about that. Don't respond to carry on. And as boot camp goes on, it doesn't get any easier outside the galley. We're going outside to play some games because of some stuff some that you stuff. did. If an individual recruit makes a mistake in boot camp, the entire company pays for it. So this is what I don't understand. I don't understand why we're in week 06. We still have gear adrift in our damn squad bays. We still can't push in the hooks Medusa. on our freaking racks, our laundry hooks. We're being lazy, Sierra, so week aren't week 06, we? you should be squared away. At this point, you should be- I'm glad um, you agree, you fire, fire, fire. Performing pretty well. Fire, fire. When recruits hear their company commander say fire, 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 it often means they're about to get smoked. smoked. is another another term for IT, PT. Real estate is ground. 
the smoke sessions, if you will, are the physical exertion of energy to reinstill to them that what they were doing was not the correct thing. Stop anticipating my command. We'll just keep playing this game good, until you get good louder. shoulder workout. Straight just hold out in a, front of you. Hold the 10 pound in front of you. I was walking I through like their squad bays. Like their racks weren't made properly. Just little minute attention to detail things that they should know as week 06 recruits, and so they got punished for it. <laughs> Getting smoked is, it's rough. It's hard to push through sometimes, but at the end of it, you're, you feel better because you, you made it through. You feel like it makes you stronger. Get on the deck! Oh, oh, did we lose count? Do we need to start over? Just do one good push-up. Usually in this week of training, we don't really discipline them as much, but we still have to uphold standards, and if they're not meeting those standards, then that's when we use these tools. Three. Have we had enough? We need to be just as tough as the Marines, the Army, the Air Force. We don't need to be as tough as the Air Force. So we have to also be held up to that standard That's, that's as well. the Chair Force. Minute 26 probation on the quarter deck. Recruits who don't meet the standards of their company commanders are put on probation, which is signified by wearing a red belt. Are you even using your brain press? You get put on probation um, when you're like falling behind the company, you have like an attitude problem. You wear a red belt that says, I need special attention, I need extra help, I need you to put the spotlight on me for a couple days. Ram! Yeah. Ram! 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 Recruits in need of even more motivation enter a program known as RAMP, which stands for Recruit Attitude Motivational Program. Recruits in RAMP are required to wear a red vest. RAMP is a program we have in place for the recruits who don't seem to grasp And those guys the will be standing there for like an hour. Of getting on board and aligning themselves with be there those for a while. core values. It gives them a chance to step back, realize the bigger picture, and that it means more than just the individuality in which brought the recruits to the training center. It's how they operate as a team and as a cohesive unit. When we filmed this, these recruits were completely unsupervised and weren't being ordered by their company commanders. Get over here, Wentler! Get over here, Wentler! I don't understand why the hell everyone is counting but you! And then you cross that threshold when I can see you, then you start doing the right thing. Get over here. Get over here. Get over here. Get over here. Chair sit. Chair sit. Feet shoulder width apart right now! Doing the right thing even when no one's looking. Say it, you. All right, so you see, I'm going to pause the video here. You see over here the two people that are looking over and they're doing the paperwork while everybody else is getting getting smoked. Uh, those are the yeomen. Now, if you're the lucky one that gets to volunteer uh, to be the yeoman, that means you do all the paperwork, uh, you do like um, uh, scheduling, you schedule, you get to skip out of uh, doing a watch because that you're, that's just your job. Uh, it's a pretty sweet gig. So... I would volunteer for that. If I could go back, I'd like to do it. Louder! 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 Shut your mouth! So take it, tell me exactly why. Why you think it's okay to do whatever the hell you want and then someone sees you and then, oop, wake up, time for me to start doing the right thing. Not good to go! Not good to go! Get upright. Fly away from me. Fly. That's how you need to scream. That, that was a good. That was a good little. In addition little to undergoing intense physical and psychological challenges, the recruits actually spend the bulk of their time in the classroom. The Coast time. Guard basic training is heavy in academics. It's almost we use the term sometimes that it's like drinking information through a fire hose. Alrighty, guys, and that and that's basically recruits why it's so important to know your acquired knowledge. Be loud, be fast, be knowledgeable. Be knowledgeable. You know, if you're if you're not as loud and not as fast, if you at least know your stuff, um, you're going to be a lot better than uh, if you don't. So lots of lots of stuff in the guide, guys. We're trained to fight fires. This so-called wet room is used to simulate a fire on a Coast Guard cutter giving the recruits a realistic firefighting scenario. 
You actually get to shoot real guns are trained now, in marksmanship nice. and seamanship. We're gonna practice on our knots right now, so everybody get your lanterns out really quick. While filming in this class, come up through. One recruit gestured oh, towards no. our camera. An officer spotted this, and while the recruit was privately reprimanded for the offense, the entire company would have to pay the price. Uh oh. You people want to act like actual crazy people all day at seamanship? I got a tool for that. Two zero zero seconds. Back online with a full canteen. Go. Fly, fly, fly. Little blue blurs. Little blue blurs. Ears. Open. Feet shoulder width apart right now. Open. Get your canteens above your skulls. Fingers interlaced, cap facing the overhead. You people have absolutely no self discipline. Absolutely no self discipline. So you're just going to remind yourself. We have, no self -discipline. Go. we have no self discipline. Go. We have no self discipline. We have no self discipline. We would get green no canteens, but I guess you get. Get your biceps to your ear. Get your biceps to your ear. We have no self discipline. We have no self discipline. Get louder. Get louder. We have no self discipline. We have no self discipline. We have no self discipline. We have no self-discipline! We have no self-discipline! Hey Lindsay, you taking a nice little break now that I turned my back? Oh, oh Lindsay. Hey, let's add a few minutes for that there, Victor. Thank you, shipmate. Thank you. That's what you do when you mess up. We when someone else messes no up, you say thank you, shipmate. Thank we you. Have no you might think uh, a small water bottle with water in it isn't that heavy, but after 20 minutes, your shoulders kind of get a little heavy, and uh, once the sweat starts dripping in your eyes, you want to definitely put it down. But let me advise you, do not put it down because you will be holding the water bottle up for a longer period of time. Taking a nice little break, Yelton. Taking a nice little break, Yelton. No, no, we have no self-discipline. Evil. It's immediate recognition for their mess up. It's immediate recognition for something that they're doing wrong. I let them set their own pace, you know, I'm saying all of you as a team are going to keep it up. Oop, he didn't make it. Let's all start over. So it's really productive. You taking a nice little rest there with your hands, Van Brunt? Crazy how fingers interlaced on the front of the canteen was the rule and oh. you broke it. Start over! Very challenging to get through it. You just almost laugh at your own pain because you're out of breath from screaming so loud, your shoulders are burning. It's a huge relief when the whistle blows and you get told to put your arms down. You want to make a deal, Victor? Yes, Ears. Ears. Open. Ears. Open. Drop the canteens. <laughs> they make her seem like so evil. That's funny. Halt. Before graduation, recruits receive their orders for where they'll be stationed after they leave Cape May. Davis, where do you want to All go, right, Davis? So. When I, when I went through, uh, you actually like rang a bell and it was like a ceremony and now they're doing it in the barracks. Um, maybe it was a bad day outside or maybe, I don't know, but in the barracks, it's just kind of depressing. Time out! Sir, go to I want to go to Puerto Rico! They're going all the way across to Hawaii. Oh. The exact opposite area. Will that, will that work for you, David? Is that good enough? Yes, yeah, Shabra! Right. You can't get Puerto Rico, you got Hawaii. That's pretty good, right? You want to go? <laughs> Jay anywhere war. Recruits can request the region or district where they prefer to be stationed after graduation. Where'd you want to go? Bounce Grewo, Circa Parker, on any Coast Guard Cutter. Winner, Coast Guard Cutter Shackle, <laughs> South Portland, 
but their requests aren't always granted. Where'd you want to go? Taylor! Taylor Kutalik! California! You're, you're going to Alabama! Woo! Alabama! On the Friday of week eight, the recruits are ready for graduation. All right, so that's uh, the, the honor guard. This is um, uh, uh, the color guard. You can, you can volunteer for these positions as well, and you get to skip out on, uh, you get to uh, go to training. Friends and family gather for their first glimpse of the recruits since the beginning of boot camp. They feel joy and accomplishment. They know that they have done something that is Sweaty physically hands. and emotionally challenging. They feel satisfied. Uh, so that's that the honor grad that. ribbon. Um, yeah, that was the honor grad ribbon. So if you're the super boot, you get the super boot ribbon, and it basically means that uh, you were a top performer in boot camp, like for leadership stuff like that. So, and you can only get that in boot camp. It doesn't count for anything. It doesn't help you advance. It doesn't help you at all. Um, but you know, it's 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 cool because it's the the only time that you can get it is in boot camp. Their parents are impressed because many times the parents see them for the first time as an adult, as an accomplice. Captain Gibbons, he's still there. I think I th I think I told you guys, but he was the one I'm pretty sure that got me reverted. So, again, thank you, Captain Gibbons. Adult. We get a lot of credit for the change that goes on here. In a lot of cases, we're just the catalyst. Recruits respond to the impetus themselves. Right, and the difference they between the plan, the, their the stripes change. on the sides, uh, white is for seamen, uh, red is for firemen. And just depending on which department you end up getting stationed at, so if you're the uh, on a cutter, you could either be a seaman on the cutter or a fireman. And, um, um, and that just basically is, is um, it doesn't really mean too, too much besides like where you're going to be working, whether with the engines or on the themselves deck side. As individuals and as a team, and they meet their company commander's standards, that's the you've actually done it. And that's, I think, what you see in the room today. Meanwhile, at Sexton Hall, Groundhog boot camp Day. is just beginning for Whiskey Company. That's the group we first met at the Philadelphia airport. Attention on deck! So you say attention on deck whenever Before the, the CEO, the commanding formed, officer, comes into the room. Addressed by Captain Owen Gibbons, the commanding officer of Training Center Cape May. I can make you the following three promises. Promise number one, this will be hard. Do not be afraid of that. Change is difficult. But if you give us your all, we will prove to you that you can do more than you ever thought yourself capable of. Yes, sir! Promise number two, I insist that you meet every single standard of this program in order to graduate, but we will assist you to meet those standards. Do you understand? Yes, sir! That assistance will not always be comforting, but it will develop in you the knowledge, skills, and abilities, the attitudes that you will need to leave here and immediately begin performing frontline Coast Guard missions in service to the American public. Do you understand that? Yes, sir! Promise number three, you will be safe. Let me say that again. You will be safe. You will train in an environment that is free from intimidation or discrimination based on your race, creed, color, gender, religion, or orientation. You will not be assaulted and you will not be harassed. Do you understand that? Yes, sir! You can do this. Every single person in this room is capable of completing this program. And the truth is that we need you to do this. All over our Coast Guard, there are units that are sailing shorthanded. There are empty racks. 
because those units are waiting for you to complete your training and to join them as they serve the American public. But the only question on our mind is, are you ready? Yes, sir! We're just about to find out. <laughs> on the yellow squares. I like the music in this separate process in the background. Alright, so that was a, that was a really, really well made video that does a really good job explaining the boot camp. Um, it doesn't really talk about all the finer details like, you know, each week um, that some of the other videos do, but it is uh, a good general picture and shows you a lot of what's going on. So, um, yeah, I go, you know, uh, just going back to it, I go over a lot of the every single week in boot camp in the book, uh, breaking it down for you, volunteer positions, uh, the required knowledge, a lot of this, the same stuff that they were talking about in this video. It's going to be in the book, uh, history, uh, you know, the weapon, um, you know, class Bravo fire, the fire tetrahedron, all, all that stuff that you need to know in boot camp that they don't give you in the helmsman. Uh, it's it's in this book. So hope you guys like this reaction video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already, guys. Talk to you next time. Peace out.